if, if you're talking to someone who's like new to what is your like the the, the one resource you're going to send someone to like a book or whatever i guess I, i'll caveat by saying other than your podcast because um, <laughs> i know that would be the answer but other than that what would be your like you know if it's like oh you got to read this book or you got to watch this specific video or whatever like what would it be that you would direct people towards um Bitcoin, Bitcoin standard uh, uh, is a must, is a, absolutely a must uh, read. Personally, I named the guy already. I have a crush and I still have a crush after so many years for Andreas Antonopoulos. To me, he is a Jedi master, really, because he has this human approach and he's super good in the way he speak and because you know bitcoin what i what i still find fascinating after so many years is that uh, bitcoin is something that has truly multiple faces is something so complex that you can you can effectively talk about bitcoin on several different perspectives you know i like what andreas uh, did with me he gave me the technological approach the sci-fi book approach the trust net approach bitcoin is much more than an economical system is a trust net we are going to be able to write on the blockchain all uh, uh, information that at the moment need a third party to be trusted. That's going to change everything. So I love that approach. To me, is a, is a absolute god. And I am so sad that some of the toxic Bitcoiner are recently attacking him uh, because he wrote Mastering Ethereum as well. And so someone calls Andreas uh, uh, a shitcoiner because of that. You have to deal with me first before you touch my master. Uh, so, so I think, I think, uh, yeah, uh, anyone attacking Andreas, like, uh, honestly, just do one as far as I'm concerned. I mean, I, uh, I it's, it's funny that you mentioned that as well, because the two, the only two Bitcoin books I have a hard copy of, and I don't just have like a PDF or audio book or whatever, are uh, Mastering Bitcoin by Andreas and then Bitcoin Standard by Safe Dean. So the two things that actually pretty much you've just mentioned. Um, did you see uh, Safe Dean uh, on Jordan Peterson's podcast? Uh, it was uh, maybe a month, two months ago, a month ago or so. I can't remember now, but um, I think uh, the ability that he had to kind of find what uh, Jordan Peterson's uh, in or interest or whatever was, and then say, oh, this is how, you know, Bitcoin, I guess, fixes that was really interesting because um, it plays to how everyone, when you're kind of trying to orange pill someone has a different thing they care about in their heart or there's a value of theirs, whether it's making money or being free or transferring energy or being environmentally friendly. And then you can play to that. Right. Um, so I found that really interesting. If you think about it, orange peeling someone, it's all about finding the G spot. It's like having sex with a new girl. You know, you have to learn what she likes, where she wants to be touched. And once that you learn that, that's when the orgasm comes. And you have to do the same with Bitcoin. If you talk to me about uh, investment, I'm going to be bored. I'm going to cheat on you on the second day. If you talk to me about the future of this society, about financial freedom, about human rights, I'm going to probably squirt. Can we say that word in the BitRefill uh, podcast? Yeah, it's all good. He's given us a fantastic uh, clip to extract from this podcast. <laughs> it's just <laughs> perfect. I love it. Yeah, it's yeah, all the, very... the Italian take on Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> it represents uh, everything perfectly, uh, I think. But... Uh, it's, 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 it's amazing to see the, because you can see you're in America, back to Italy, to El Salvador, uh, you've been working in marijuana, making marijuana, Bitcoin. There's a, there's a lot that you've done in the past, probably I'm guessing only probably what, four or five years, maybe if you, I mean, maybe slightly longer, but uh, it's been a, a wild journey. I guess like what in your mind, uh, it sounds like you're living somewhat in the moment, which is what I like to do as well. But what is your kind of plan moving forward i guess like for the podcast but also for, for 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 you for ricardo's life 
um, I'm so blessed. Um, I always wanted my life to be an adventure and so far has been just fantastic. And uh, I owe Bitcoin a lot because he, uh, Bitcoin gave me the opportunity to change my life once again for the good. So I don't know, how, nobody knows what's going to happen with it. I don't know if this revolution is going to be successful to me it's already successful because I'm doing what I love. I'm creating content, content that I blindly believe into. And I'm, I mean, guys, let's face it. This is for the history books. We all are going to be truly in the history book in a hundred years. Kids at school, they're gonna they're gonna study about the early days of Bitcoin, you know? And those guys are us. We are those guys, you know. It's like when you read uh, now who started the French Revolution and you stop thinking uh, what would have been back in those days, they're gonna ask the same thing about who started the Bitcoin revolution, and it's us. It's literally us, and this is already something huge. I feel so blessed every day in my life. Um, there is so much still to be done, and so I'm looking forward to keep doing what I'm doing for people in Italy, to keep uh, touring the world, to find out real use case, uh, because that's what I want to see, you know? I would love to spend time in Africa, I would love to go to Vietnam, I would love to go to India to understand what is happening here, because guys, let's face it, we need Need more and better journalism. Most of the people, the so-called pro journalists in Italy, they write articles on Facebook, reading Facebook pages. It's time to get our, our hands dirty and to go back in the fields and to see by yourself and to witness and to experience. That's why I wanted to live in, a, in El Salvador for a month and a half using Bitcoin only, not because I'm crazy, because it's a, it's a, it's a, it, it, it's a game. It's a game to tell something, you know? It's a game, to, it's a way to tell a story that it's gonna be interesting and that it's gonna be catchy for people in Italy to read. So um, I'm gonna keep doing this as much as I can and, um, and hopefully uh, doing my best. <laughs> um, and then hopefully maybe I'm gonna write something in English as well. My blog uh, on the website, uh, um, Bitcoin Italia, bip.show as well. That's easier to remember. Um, it's in Italian and in English. And I had so many positive feedbacks uh, uh, from my international friends. So I would like to explore more uh, on that. And we're going to see each other at the Bitcoin conference in Miami in April. And I want to come back to El Salvador to see what's going on. And there. There's plenty to do, guys. We are legion. We have a lot to do. Yeah, it's, what you said about uh, journalism is interesting as well, because you can see from uh, even like if uh, you look at Joe Rogan's latest uh, podcast ratings, it's like 12 million or just shy or just over 12 million people on one of the latest episodes. And then you compare that to like, all of these other like, uh, well, like yeah, CNBC and all these other people's ratings that are all just completely like the traditional journalists ratings and shows that are on TV ratings are just so much lower. Uh, and it goes to show the broad appeal globally that, that, that someone can have, but also the, I guess the, the dying sort of uh, belief in large journalist uh, companies. And, and, and it feels like independent people uh, are doing better because they kind of have to have credibility or else if they don't, they don't have anything, not getting paid anywhere else. So that's because, because guys, we have freedom and they don't anymore. I mean, I can talk for the rest of the world, but in Italy, actually, there is a, there is a non-profit organization, is a French one, that is called uh, Reporters with No Borders. 
and every year, every year they compile um, uh, uh, they value country by country for freedom of speech and freedom of journalism all over the world, all over the world. And Italy, oh boy, Italy ranks pretty low, pretty low, like a North African country. Because, uh, you know, being a journalist today means being a tool. Because nobody reads books anymore, nobody re reads newspaper anymore. Newspapers and real journalists are basically in the hand of the advertisers, because it's advertising that is paying for their salary and for their uh, newspapers, and of course, there is political power, which is basically what they work for. Because if you if you wanna if you wanna have a successful party in a first world country, you need to have the news on your side. So that happened in America, happened in Italy with Berlusconi. Who doesn't know Berlusconi, uh, the proto-Trump? So uh, it's it's hard to be a mainstream journalist as well today. That's where we come handy because we have no masters because we have no uh, because I run no advert I, I run no ads in my show. I am here paid by the support of my community and be, and paid uh, with uh, money of people that believes in what I'm doing that wants from me to have quality content. And that's, I mean, that, that's something that has no price because it gives me freedom. It's all about freedom, guys. Bitcoin is about freedom. We are all about freedom because someone has to stand for it. No, I like that approach. Uh, I really like that approach. Uh, I mean, I guess, um, I don't know if the other guys have any more questions, but we're running on for about an hour. Um, well, not far off it, I suppose. Um, so I don't know. Is there, is there anything else anyone, well, anyone wanted to ask? Yeah, I I was uh, going back to the to the podcast that you have uh, about the visit that you did to Berlin, where the geothermal uh, mining is being done, and you said something interesting there. You said that you said two things that were interesting because it kind of it kind of shows the contradictions here in El Salvador. You said that you know it's a third world country, but it's the first country in the world that it's mining bitcoins, and you also said uh, that. Uh, it was the most high. It was one of the most high-level technological places in the world. And now that you you mentioned that you come from a tech background and you always be interested about technology, that is actually amazing. And as I said, you know, this is as you've seen now during these five weeks that you've been here. This is a country of contrasts, and I think you have captured that perfectly. Uh, there is no real question, just a comment on that. But I have another question, and that is, why do you have a Sputnik? Uh, satellite as your logo <laughs> i i live in russia so i'm, I'm kind of you know uh you know turned <laughs> because we are going to the moon and in italy we were the first one and the sputnik like it, like it or not was the first one so uh, i loved to use that little icon to 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 be the logo of my show because we are going to the moon guys never forget that um, uh, the geothermal plant of Berlin, uh, Rodrigo, was one of the best day of my life. Uh, my the the real geek in me was. I mean, I had a, I had a boner all visit long. It was so cool, guys. It's totally reusable energy, hundred percent green, condensed condensed in absolute digital scarcity by a government by a state for the first time this is going to be this is going to be groundbreaking this is going to change everything and uh, there is one thing that i want to tell you guys and that i don't say in the in the video i was very uh, eager during the visit to speak with the guys that were working at the facility, right? The technicians, to understand if what they really think of Bitcoin, 
because those are scientists and they make energy. That's what they do. They've been trained to make green energy. So I was interesting, uh, I, I, um, I mean, it was interesting to understand what they think of Bitcoin, if they see it as a waste of energy or, or if they get it, if they agree with the, um, with the uh, uh, approach that, that Bitcoin is condensed energy, that is a mathematical battery, you know? And uh, I was blown away by the fact that they totally did. They said, no, listen, this is going to change the way we manage electri electricity consumption and storage for the next 100 years. This is fantastic. This is a groundbreaking. Thanks to Bitcoin, we're going to be able to radically change the electric grid. Uh, we're going to be able to harvest uh, electricity in places like in the desert, where before Bitcoin, it was absolutely technologically impossible to harvest. This is good for mankind, according to the Kardashev law, you know? So this is going to make us a better society, a better species. And this guy is someone that makes electricity to live. So the whole Bitcoin uh, is responsible for the global warming narrative. God, that's so dumb that every time I hear that, it, it makes me cry. I think it's uh, that's just a that's just a sort of uh, part of the media narrative and, and, and lack of education on Bitcoin, I suppose, isn't it? Globally, really. Um, I mean, it speaks volumes the fact that my mum, within about three minutes, could work out that it was BS. Um, it's pretty... <laughs> speaks, speaks volumes as far as I'm concerned. It's people who really harp it on, it's like, really? Come on. Um, they really believe that, but there you go. Um, no, I do. It's, it's been um, been wonderful to have you on the podcast. It's uh, much appreciated on my part, and uh, I, uh, yeah, I appreciate your passion for, for Bitcoin and uh, lots more in El Salvador. And I can see you probably, well, potentially uh, going to any of the other countries that legalize Bitcoin this coming year, which fingers crossed should happen. Um, and yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, uh, for anyone who is obviously uh, listening, uh, as we said at the beginning, uh, Bitcoin Italia podcast is Ricardo's podcast, BIP underscore show on Twitter or BIP dot show uh, on the, uh, the World Wide Web. Um, but yeah, Ricardo, is there anything you wanted to, to, to say before? Before you uh, before we head off let's do it again friends absolutely i uh, completely agree yeah we'll be happy to have you back uh we've started having a few people back for for second podcasts uh because we just love love chatting them so we'll be happy to have you back in the future um but yeah it's been amazing and i, I say i'm interested to see uh, your journey um as you uh, kind of what happens next basically in the in the life of ricardo so i appreciate you coming on and uh for everyone out there listening uh, have an amazing uh day week year month um and thanks so much rodrigo and ricardo for joining me uh and hey guys, thank uh, you so much take care everyone out there uh have a great time and uh keep on buying some bitcoin okay.